Come back and go to Newcomb. <laughs> oh, it's a better school. Besides, you don't make it as a Vassar girl. You, darling. My dear Vassar isn't exactly the dream school. She's far enough away from our big brother. Look, by the way, where is he? Look, I told you I had to see you both. I made that clear on the phone, Vance. Yeah, what's wrong, Denise? It? It's nothing, but look, I've got something to tell you both. I have to get back to school tonight. Look, is he here? No, he's home playing big brother as oh. usual. I tell you. He's really pissed that you won't talk about this on the phone. Look, Vance, you don't talk about this on the phone. Yeah, but you know how he blew his top when you decided to go to Vassar. He's afraid some Yankee carpetbagger is going to seduce you one of you on your weekends in New York. Okay, if a southern bigot at LSU and Baton Rouge seduces me. You're in rare form, honey. Look, Vance, please don't let him. Oh, Rice is in such a Denise, what is it? I have something to tell you both. Please, Vince, when I tell you, don't cop out on me. You're the only family I've got. All right, let's have it. Well? I'm getting married. Of course, Denise. What else does a young lady of culture and breeding do when she finishes school? But that's hardly any reason to fly down here and get me out of court. Oh, don't use your courtroom technique on me, Dan. You know what I mean. I'm getting married now, and I'm not going to finish school. I can't finish school. Just what do you mean, you can't finish school? After all the money I've spent on that damn Yankee institution, I think you'd better clarify that hey, last statement. Hey, hold it. Take it easy. Honey, why, why can't you finish school? You can tell us. You've got to tell us. I can't finish school because I'm getting married next week in New York. And I'm pregnant. Well, I'll be a son of a bitch. I would have bet my last dime that a Robert woman could handle her first school romance without this. This isn't a school romance, Dan. My pregnancy isn't an accident. Oh, spare us the details, Denise. Look, I'll arrange an immediate abortion and you'll abortion? return to school. For Christ's sakes, Dan. There is one thing, however. This boy, I want to talk to him and his parents. And I hope to God, Denise, he comes from a decent Dan, family. Don't! Oh, Dee. Please sit down, Ben. I haven't told you everything. Vance, I love you very much. I know how you feel about things, Dan. I mean about life in general. I don't know how to tell you what I'm about. Good Lord, Denise, I've had enough. Will you out with All it? All right, Dan. The man. A black man. You, my baby sister, you let a stinking degenerate nigger into your body. Hey, Dad, get her back. She's better off dead. The nigger son of a bitch is gonna marry his sister. Can we do it? I'll leave her go. You're a real shit. You know that, Dan? I knew it. You knew about this all along, didn't you? But you listen to me, little brother. She doesn't exist. As far as I'm concerned, I don't have a sister. You. It's for you, you little slut. You go back to that nigger and I'll kill him. Do you hear me? I'll kill him. You're dumb, or Dan. I'll kill the both of them. He's a dead nigger, I promise you. He's as good as dead. You are nuts, Dan. You belong in a goddamn cage. Carol doesn't think so, now does she, little brother? 
Your former girlfriend is going to marry me. She couldn't take any more of your nigger-loving ways. Eddie! Eddie, where are you going? I don't want to talk about it, man. I love him. Way back to New York where he is. Oh, Denise, it, it can't work. Think about it. You know, these things, they just don't work. I never thought I'd hear that from you, man. Oh, Dave, if, if it was just you and me and this crummy world didn't exist, it could work. You know I believe that. What are you going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'll do something. Whatever it is, I'll do it with him. Hafti. I know what Dennis is capable of. I'm not going to run, baby. But you don't understand. He's capable of murder. God, I love you. Love you so much.
<laughs> well, what do I say, Father? Amen might be appropriate. <laughs> yes, it might be at that. You know, Jesse, the church could stand a bit more humility itself at times. Practicing what one preaches is sometimes a very difficult thing to do. But you came back, and that's what's important. You know, it's a whole lot like the parable of the prodigal son. You see, that uh, story, Jesse, is not just about the son that returned to the fold. No, there was another son. He stayed and ended up hating his father, his brother, his very home itself. Now, the church is your home, and you came back. And if we couldn't accept your humanity, well, the church would be the loser. This way, we both win. You have the church, but most important, the church has you. Yes. But I want to thank you for helping me get my old parish back in New Orleans. Father Babin figures returning to the scene of the crime is standard procedure in criminology. <laughs> Maybe in theology it has its place also. <laughs> God bless you, my son. <laughs> thank you very much, Father. And goodbye. Goodbye. You were coming. We didn't expect you for another three days. Well, I didn't want to inconvenience anybody. Let me look at you. How you been? Fine. You look great. Thank you. Welcome home. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the place sure hasn't changed much, has it? Well, I like that. All our brilliant carpentry, and you didn't even notice. Notice what? <laughs> the wall, Father. We finally got our new window in. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> yeah, but it looks good. Well, look, Father, I have to run. Let's get together for lunch, okay? Fine. I have to teach my biology class about reptiles. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. In the cafeteria? Yes. Bye-bye. For your penance, they are now Father in the Hail Mary. By the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you and go in peace. Jesse, I'm going to take over your duties here at the rectory for several days. Well, why, Father? Have I done something wrong? Well, no, that's just the point. Your work here has been superb, but it's just that you're spending all of your time here, and that isn't good. Now, why don't you take it easy? Renew acquaintances. And there is one very touchy situation in which you could be extremely helpful. The Robears. Oh, you mean between uh, Dan and Ben? <clears throat> Have you seen them yet? No, Father. I've been... Uh... Then you don't know about Denise. Denise? What about Denise? About her suicide. Her what? Yes, she committed suicide. You were away at the time, and then you went into the monastery in Comunicado. Oh, my God. Well, why? What happened? Well, I don't think anybody knows the whole story, but it split Dan and Vance. Jesse, why don't you go and see them? I think you could make 
a lot more headway with them than I can. And take all the time you need. Don't worry about the rectory. I'll cover your duties here. Thank you, Father. Yes, of course, I'll do that. Try to do me in. I won't take it lying down. A man got to play for all he's worth. Life is a mean old town. Father Babin told you? What? Oh, Anne. Come in. Sit down. About Denise's suicide. Oh, yes, that. Yes, he did. Who's that young man? Some guy she was going with at the time, I think. I'm not sure. Did Father Babin tell you about the rumor? Rumor? What rumor? She was pregnant. The father was black. Oh. No, he didn't. Nobody wants to talk about it. Vance won't talk about it, even with me. Even to you? Oh, I'm sorry. You couldn't know. Vance and I are going together now. Well, how long has that been going on? Ever since Carol. Yes, yes. It's getting pretty bad. Vance is still hung up on losing Carol. Sometimes I think Dan's marrying her just to spite Vance. <laughs> That's my problem. I talk too much anyway. I've got to get through to Vance, for our sake. Well, I just don't want to see you get hurt. Not with all that's coming down, with the wedding and all. Yeah, I know what you mean. How is Vance taking it? <laughs> oh, he doesn't love Carol. He never did. It's just his male ego, his pride that's hurt. Dan tends to rub things in. Yeah. Oh, look, Father, I've got to run. Vance is picking me up. I'm late already. Bye, Father. Thanks. Hey, you play it cool, okay? Where is he? Where is that little punk? I may be your law partner and your best man, but I'm not your brother's keeper. Ben, we're, uh, we're ready when you are. Thank you, Father. suits your adolescent ego, you go right ahead. I think the lady decided she wanted a better man. be a nigger, but this is the Lord's house and no man, black or white, is going to defame it. Come on, Vance, let's go. Hey, it's a beautiful wedding, huh? Come on. Beauty and the bigot. Keep the family name untarnished, Dan. Blue blood the blue blood. Keeping that age pure!
I bet you never saw one like that, huh, Jesse? You're right. That's a new one for me. Huh? Hey, I gotta go back. What you gotta go back for? I forgot to kiss the bride, Jesse. Well, don't worry about it. Neither did I. Come on. Jesse, that's it. We, go, we both got to go back and kiss the bride. And then when you kiss her, Dan is going to have a heart attack. And then I'll move in on Carol. <laughs> Come on. We, let's talk about it in the car, okay? Hey, I'm driving. Oh, and I'm buying the coffee, okay? He's going to pay for it. What? You see, Carol was raised believing that being born in the Daughters of the Confederacy was second only to salvation, you know? But she, she started coming around when I was going with her. And I went to Nam, and my brother moved in, and his money and his social... Listen, have you ever considered that losing Carol might be the best thing? For you, I mean. I mean, if it's what she wants. We know it's what Dan wants. Frankly, I think they deserve each other, man, and you're better off out of it. I'll be all right. As soon as my ego heals. At least that's what Ann tells me. But Dan Robert's got a big one coming, Jesse. That's a promise. You know, I never told anybody this before. But Denise, she'd be alive today if that racist bastard, if he had thought about her instead of his social image. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard about Denise. Vance, is there any truth to the rumor that she was pregnant and that the father was black? Oh, it's not a rumor, Jesse. He was black, all right. That's, that's why she's dead. She couldn't take Dan's bigotry. And he, he completely disowned her. He beat her up. He threatened to kill her. He threatened to kill both of them. He killed her. He might as well have cut her wrist himself. And damn it, Jesse, that man's going to pay for it. Make a pretty bride. Thank you, Willie. And marrying Mr. Dan, too. And all the while, I thought Mr. Vance was the one. That's enough, Willie. Dan, it's all right. It's all right. Carol, honey, would you wait for me on the porch? I'll be right there. Willie, I thought I told you to stay out of the way. I'm sorry, Mr. Dan. Just trying to... I don't care what you were just trying to do, Willie. I'm tired of you stumble-bumming around here day after day, year after year. I want you out of here. You're dismissed. Dismissed? You mean fired? But, Mr. Dan, I can't find another job just like that. I've been working for you and your daddy so long, I haven't even had time to think about working anywhere else. That's not a subject I wish to discuss, Willie. My father's dead, and I'm in charge now. You've got your notice, you're dismissed. Mr. Dan, what about Clara May? I mean, you know how long she's been sick. All that medicine, all that debt I'm in. I can't, even, can't afford to miss one payday, let alone look for another job. You heard me, Willie. You have your notice. I want you and all of your tools out of my garage by tomorrow. I understand you handle these in Nam, right? You don't know the time I had keeping that little devil alive. Well, have fun.
Well, better anyway. Dan still won't talk to me. Can't really blame him. I guess I did kind of screw up the wedding, huh? Well, you have to give him a little time. That's why I'm here. I thought I'd send him over some flowers to help smooth things out. <laughs> oh, he's going to love that. A token Negro priest asking for his forgiveness. Master Dan, I'm sure sorry I stopped you from defaming the church and <laughs> killing your younger brother. Oh, he'll really love that. <laughs> Come on, Dance. Now, don't be so bitter. Uh, that attitude will kill you in the long run. After all, to ask forgiveness is humility. But to forgive, <sighs> salvation. You really ought to give Dan a chance. Oh, Jesse, how can you say that? I mean, after all the crap you've had to put up with from people like him. People like him. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I get it from both sides. For some whites, I'm a, a, a good nigger. The only difference between a good nigger and a nigger is the word good. And for some blacks, I'm an Uncle Tom nigger. Believe me, it's all the same thing. Nigga is an ugly word, but it is, after all, only a word. Yeah, too much, Jesse. Vance, those roses are exactly what I want. How much are they? <laughs> Nothing on the house. Come on now. A right. welfare case, I'm not. How much? Okay, eighteen fifty a dozen. I'll bill you later. <laughs> <laughs> Will he get there today? Oh yeah, if I have to deliver them myself. Uh, well, Vance, I really have to go. <laughs> Good see to see you. Yeah. Glad you came by. So am I. more flowers for you. You got enough flowers here to make a funeral. Who are these from? I don't know. Well, go on. I'll take it over now. Come on in, Willie. Some more flowers, Miss Carol. Thank you. Aren't these lovely? And hey, Miss Carroll, tell Mr. Dan I'll be leaving tomorrow like he said. Oh, yes, Willie. I am sorry. I'll tell him. Father Jesse, this is Carol. Carol I'm sorry well, I am too, Father. Is yes, he's in his study. Oh, I wish you would come over. Oh, by the way, Father, your flowers arrived and they're breathtaking. Thanks so much. You're time, okay? Fine. About seven o'clock then. That's good. good. We'll be waiting for you.
Come on up. As well as can be expected under the circumstances. What can I do for you? Well, I actually came over to talk to you. Come on over and have a seat. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Uh, would you like a drink? No, I don't want to be a bother to you. No bother? Uh, would you like some wine? <laughs> no, not really. What I came to talk to you about was... Uh... Dad, aren't these beautiful? Father Jesse said. Thanks again, Father. I think I'll put them in the bedroom. Put them on the dresser, dear. That was a very nice gesture, Father. Thank you. You're welcome. On second thought, I think I will have just a little while. Carol? Carol, honey. Yes, dear? Would you get us some wine, please? Of course, darling. What I came to talk to you about was uh, the incident at the church. I'm sorry I struck you. I know it was wrong of me to lose my temper. Apology accepted, Father. I didn't mean to call you a Nick. Call you that. I mean, well, you're not one of those. You're a. Well, you're a black man. Now. Dad, honey, I can't find a boy. Excuse me, Father. I'll be right back. What the hell is this? Dan, I just want you to please be nice to him. What do you mean, be nice to him? Dan, he's a man of God. What? No nigger's a man, much less a man of God. Oh, Dan, please. I hadn't had a chance to uh, congratulate you yet. You're a very lucky man, Dan. Lucky hell. I just take what I want. There's no luck to that part. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'd better say goodnight. When do you plan to leave on the honeymoon? Uh, as soon as the trial's over. Probably be a couple more days. Maybe father, Yes, Mrs. Romare, I have a few more calls to make, and I didn't want to Come by any time. I hope I see you two in church Sunday. Possibly, Father. It all depends on the trial.
Operator, give me the police. Upstairs and don't touch anything to lay bare. Gets here with his proof in the coroner's office. And we'll leave that snake alone, too. Jim, you better go up there and watch and make sure we don't mess up. Huh? Okay. scandal. I mean, uh, case. That's right. Well, Lieutenant, what can I do to wind up this nightmare for you? Well, the first thing you can do is uh, ask Mr. Robert if he feels like talking now or later. <laughs> really, Lieutenant, is that absolutely necessary? Well, it's not only necessary, Mr. Markham, it's compulsory. Hey, boy, where do you think you're going? Oh, excuse me. Uh, this is uh, Detective Bunch, my uh, partner. This is... Uh, Who'd you say you were again? Markham. Jack Markham. Yeah. Mr. Markham, this is Mr. Bunch. Mr. Markham is uh, Mr. Robert's uh, law partner. Hello? Excuse me. Are we outside, Tony? Right. Uh, Mr. Robert? Yes. We'll be through here in a little while. But tonight, anyway. It'd be nice if you can answer a couple of questions. What do you want to know? Dan, you know you don't have to say anything, don't you? That's right, Mr. Robert. You think about it. You honkies are crazy, you know that? What? You heard me, man. I said you honkies are crazy. What do you mean by that, Jim? Uh, I mean, we shoot them or we cut them. But a snake? <laughs> Shit. Hey, Jim. What do you think that snake was really meant for? That's a good question. What do you say, Mr. Robert? Go ahead. The snake, Mr. Robert. How do you think it got in the house? I haven't the faintest idea. Did Mrs. Robert have any means you know about him in some way to try something like this? No. No. Did you? If 
you are alive. May the Lord forgive you by this holy anointing for the sins you may have committed in this life. The blessings of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. attorney, Mr. Robert. Doesn't it seem a little strange to you that a man's bride is murdered and the first thing he does is call his law partner? Now, that's enough. Dan, you don't have to answer any more questions. Lieutenant, I suggest you get your facts straight. Mr. Robert called the police first, and then he called me. I'll testify to that. You say anything about testifying? I'm really sorry, Dan. Sorry. You know what kind of snake it is, Doc? Whoever killed it did one hell of a job. I haven't been able to identify it yet. But I did get the poison sack out, and, and I sent it down to the lab along with some of her blood samples. I feel like a kid back in zoology class again. I haven't dissected a snake since then. Only people. Doc. How long would it take a snake bite to kill somebody? What do you mean? Well, you see, I have to know how long it'd take this snake to kill someone. If it took, like, hours, and how come the husband didn't call sooner? Well, that depends on where it came from and, and how it got to the victim. You won't believe it, Doc. It came in some flowers. Uh, excuse me. Pathology? Yeah. Asia? What do you mean, Asia? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, let me get that down. Hold on. Spell it for me, will you? E L A P I D. Elephant. Uh -huh. Hiya, Jim. Bungaras. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait, wait, not so fast. Now, that's it. Well, oh, good. Thanks a lot. Well, Jim, see you still with the dynamic Dago. Yeah, Doc. You know how it is. I let him move into my neighborhood and he ran it down. So I gotta stay with him until I can teach him a little culture, you know? <laughs> culture, that's what I need working around here. Come on, Doc, what do you got there? You'll kill him. Extremely venomous nocturnal elephant snake, genus Bungaris, of Eastern Asia and adjacent islands. Its venom can kill in seconds. Front fangs, small, body approximately 12 inches in length. Venom paralyzes the nervous system. Victim suffocates. Asia. That's over 10,000 miles away. And from the location of the wound, I'd say it was accelerated. She was dead before she hit the floor, I'd estimate. Well, you boys have a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, okay, Doc. Thanks a lot. Come on, bro. Buy some lunch. Come again some other time, boys.
Now, Dan, for Carol's parents' sake, please. All right, Jack. I promise. Feeling good, little brother? Playing with snakes make you feel better? More like a man? I don't know who you were after, but you're gonna die for this, I promise you that. Yeah, who is this? My name is not important, Mr. Robert. Well, it's important to me. I don't talk to people I don't know. I demand to know who this is. Mr. Robert, we performed a certain service for you 17 months ago, and we haven't been paid. We fulfilled our end of the agreement, and we can't afford to extend credit, if you know what I mean. Look, I thought I told you before. Mr. Robert, we've been through all that before. Your blaming us for your sister's untimely demise is foolish. You should have considered the consequences before you initiated the contract. We want payment in full, now. We don't have legal recourse, if you know what I mean. Is that a threat? Look, do you know who you're talking to? No threats, Mr. Robert. Are you trying to threaten me? No threats. We simply can't afford to let a client not make payment in full. It would ruin our professional reputation, if you know what I mean. You go to hell! You've been here. Not long. Not long, ma'am. Please don't point that thing at me. You scared me to death. Well, what do you want? Wait a second, let me catch my breath. I wasn't sure before whether I wanted to finish what I came for. I think I'll, I'll just come back. What did you come for? Did my little brother send you? No. Vance didn't send me. I came on my own. What I wanted to talk about was that uh, I heard what you told Vance at Carol's wake. Well, 
Aren't you going to say anything? I don't believe he's a murderer. Dan, for God's sake, he's your brother. Doesn't that mean anything? You listen to me. My brotherly love died the night Carol was murdered. And I have my plans for the person I feel was responsible. Do you understand that? I'm going to marry Vance. I'm not going to let you manipulate our lives like you do with everyone else. I'm not going to be scared away by threats. Neither is Vance. That's a decision you may have cause to regret. My wife, Mr. Dismiss. Clara May is dead, you know that? She died on account of you. You're gonna die on account of me. Yes, I'm here now. Right. All right, I'll talk to you later. It's too bad you had to kill him. Now we'll never know his story. I know his story. What? Nothing. Nothing? Hell. Now, look, Lieutenant DeVito. And you shut up. How come you're always on the scene before the police? Lieutenant, I resent that. Never mind. Just sit down and stay out of my way. Would you like me to sit you down, Mr. Markham? Now, Mr. Robert, what's this I know his story crap? If you know anything, you better tell me right now. Or I'll run your ass in so fast it'll make your head spin. I don't care who you are, do you understand me? Hey, Tony. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I don't know anything else. I'm really very sorry. I'm sorry. What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing? Certainly not nothing. This is nothing. Just drop it. You don't want to talk about it. Well, I do want to talk about it. Please, just drop it. Jesus. Hey, where were you today? Something happened today, and I want to know what it is. Look, it's no big thing. Well, how about letting me decide my half of what a big okay, thing is? Okay, okay. I went to see Dan on the boat, that's all. You did what? I went to see Dan. You just went and saw Dan? Yes, is there something wrong with that? Yeah, there's something wrong with that. I told you he was my business. Excuse me. I thought his threat was our business. The hell with his damn threat! Dan, grow up! Why don't you admit that he frightens you? He frightens me. Dan doesn't frighten me. I'm not afraid of him. I told you that before, and I also told you to stop bugging me about him. Oh, shit. Yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Robert. Is Mr. Novak here? I'd like to talk to him. Come on in. And it's Lieutenant DeVivo. Excuse me, I hope I didn't disturb anything. Yeah, well, you did. Vance. No, Lieutenant, what can I do for you? Miss Novak, I'd like to know where you were this morning. What do you want to know for? What difference does it make where she was this morning? Mr. Robert, do you mind? I'm asking you questions. Yeah, I do mind, as a matter of fact. What right do you have to Back come in? I went to see Dan on the boat. 
Miss Novak, about what time was that? It's about 10.30, but I don't understand. And what time did you leave the boat? I don't know. I guess it was about... Oh, wait a minute. You don't have to answer any more of these questions. I'd like to know what this is all about. In the first place, I don't like being interrupted when I'm talking to someone. In the second place, it's my day off, and I've got no time to fool around with you. In the third place, they've just thrown two homicides in my lap. Two weeks ago, or maybe you've forgotten, your sister-in-law was killed by some imported snake, and nobody wanted to say anything about that. And 30 minutes ago, your brother killed a family gardener. And you're trying to tell me about her rights? The hell is going on in this family? Come on, let's go. Man, what's happened? Nothing, man, nothing. Novak was there, all right, and she was on a boat today, too, but she doesn't know any more about it than we do. It's that family that's driving me up a wall. Let, let's get at it. Come on. Let me say, I'm sorry about the other day. Vance isn't like that. He... Well, his brother's always been a source. Forget it, Miss Novak. What can I do to help you? Well, there's something I think you should know about. I've tried to get Vance to tell you, but he won't. Lieutenant, Vance has asked me to marry him. Oh, well, congratulations. Is that what you came down here to tell me? Did you know that Dan fired Willie just before Carol was killed? Yes, Miss Novak. Oh. Did you know Dan threatened Vance at Carol's wake? Threatened him? How? Oh. He accused Vance of murdering Carol. That's why I went to the boat, to talk to him. I don't mind telling you, Lieutenant. Dan scares me. Do you believe he meant that? My people often say things under stress, Miss Novak. I think Dan meant it. Lieutenant, do you suspect Vance? This is a homicide case, Miss Novak. Everyone is a suspect. Everyone? Dan, too? It's possible. Well, I feel a little better anyway. I, I just thought you should know. Well, you did the right thing, Miss Novak, and thank you. I wouldn't worry too much about idle threats. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss
How are things going? Normal Saturday, Mr. Robert. Just checking things out. Okay, thanks a lot, Charlie. I need that money now. Would you shut up and listen? I don't think they're going to wait any longer. Well, what do you want to do? Okay, okay. Just uh, kneeling there in broad daylight with that that gun. Okay, okay. In which direction was he pointing the weapon? Um, that way, south. He was right about here, huh? Uh, yeah, uh, kneeling. About like this? Yeah, yeah. And just pointing out that way, huh? Yeah. Hey, Tony, I think I got something for you. What you got? Take a look at this. Does that name mean anything to you? Coincidence? It's no coincidence. Take a look out here. Yeah, I see what you mean. Try to kill his boss. Why would a boss want to kill his guard? It's amazing how many people hate Dan Robert. I mean, his gardener tried to knife him. His brother may have hated him enough to plant a snake in his bedroom. And those guys from New York sent a hitman down here to try and get rid of him. I can't figure it, Jim. Uh, hey, you know, I only met him twice before myself. I don't like him very much. <laughs> That's a 12 nothing. Any of those guys from New York? Yeah. What did he ever do to them? Well, what about his brother? If he missed the first time, you know he could be trying again with some outside help. I'd ask. Goodbye, Mike. Records checked. Last five years show Robert yellow sheet indicates suicide. One Denise Robert, white, female, age 20. 
Home address, New Orleans. Next of kin, Daniel Robert. Same address. I wonder if she hated him, too. We can check on that. I got a feeling we're racing against time. Who's ever behind us hasn't finished yet. They haven't got to Dan Robert. I still think the brother's our best suspect. Possible, that could be. A big shout. children's children, even to the third and fourth generation, and thereafter have life everlasting. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, God, world without end. Amen. Well, are you going to kiss her or are you going to stand there grinning at me? <laughs> Congratulations, hey, thanks, Jesse. <laughs> peace offering. Well, I wish he'd come. I mean, we're all the family that's left. I love him. He's my brother. Oh, he'll come around. After we get back from New York, you'll see. Hey, you're going to New York, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little business and a lot of pleasure. <laughs> well, thanks again. <laughs> see you when we get back. Good luck to you, man. Good luck to both of you.
Who's there? Say on there. Help me, please. One hell of a shot. You know, you really should have been there. I don't know who your man was, but the cat is good. I mean, in Nam, we use a much smaller caliber of weapon, but that thing, man, that thing blasted his ass up. I mean, there we were. Me, my twin brother, the priest, his little white chick, on a picnic. <laughs> That's a heavy scene in itself. Can you dig that? This black Catholic priest and his pregnant honky whore. I burned my brother's body. Man, I burned my brother's body. So I figured that the Robert's have got to get theirs, too. You see, I figure I got me some dues to pay. And I might as well start with the first Robert I know. I took Denise's diary. I took all my brother's things. His priest's habit, his briefcase, everything. You see, I took his place. I even called the church. Asked him to let me spend a year in the monastery, just so I could get the moves down, you understand? I mean, I, mean, I took his place. Everything worked out for I bet you're wondering about that snake, huh? A little VC trick I learned in that. Hey, I got Ann, too. That's why that knife's sticking out of your chest. <laughs> I got you all. This jive-ass nigga I got you all. You know what? It was easy! Ah! Easy!
do is wait around. Yeah, man. Tired of here, too. No, no, Father, I can, I can. Heard you taking a trip. Yep. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you. 